Hello, my name is Piotr Glushko, and I'm working in Simply Audio Company. Today I would like to talk to you about Dirkboxes. So, sound engineer gentlemen, please take a seat. It will be quite short, but a very informative video. Let's begin. As we can see on the screen at the moment, I have a sound card which is in a standby mode. Uh, here we have some sticks sticking out in uh, 2, 4, 5, 9 kilohertz on a minus 130 decibel level. Whole scale is pretty real. We can see on the right side that zero is analog zero, 775 millivolt. 0 dB. So, all measurements we will make using this scale and which uh, types of distortion which devices brings in. Great! Today it will be this list of uh, marvelous tie boxes. We have Simple Way D1, J1, Legendary J48 from Canadian company Radial, which I love. Also, we have a Clark and BSS. Let's make a small testers send through these devices a sine wave and we'll see what are they worth. Let's give a right to Clark and BSS to be first. At the moment, my input is withdrawn through 50 ohm, and we can see what's happening in this withdrawn state. Cable catches 50 Hz a bit, but nevertheless, it will not affect our experiment. So we have perfectly clean source of a sine wave from our friend, Latvian friend, Viktor Miskevich. He produces beautiful generators, which have a 160 decibels average signal-to-noise attitude, which allows to see a distortion of devices, but not the generators. Let's plug in our first subject. We will engage a phantom power on a card. And as we can see, we have a complete silence. Uh, we have still the same noise which was visible with the box unplugged. Uh, let's not pay attention to those, let's just remember that they were there. Let's send 1 kHz uh, sine wave. As we can see, zero meshes zero. But we have pretty large uh, harmonic trail from uh, 1 kHz and up. Let's try to lift the ground. Well, it practically didn't help. Let's go further Thanks to this device. Now let's take a beautiful device from BSS company. Let him turn on first. Well, here is this moment which we were waiting for so long. We have opened input. As we can see, I'm touching an XLR input with a finger. And yeah, it's open. As a result, this device can't be plugged in on stage. It will be buzzed because we have a lot of light gear there, which produces a lot of noise. Let's try to turn pad on. Minus 20 decibels. Oh, yeah, everything became more interesting, but we lost an output in impedance as a result. Let's run sine wave. 
0 again. Distortion is 0 0.002, but big trail. I want to mention that those are hybrid day boxes, active ones, which have an active electronic circuit. And also transformers are included. Maybe it, the transformers are overloaded, maybe it's uh, the circuit. I would call those friends twins, because they are pretty identical. So, if you have an option to buy one for 100 and the other one for 50, choose the cheaper one. Okay, we're done with blue and green. Now let's take uh, Canadians. Canada rules. Many loves them. Perfect. We see the, the same picture. Well, I'm touching a case, and 50 Hz sticks out. Let's try to ground it. Yeah, and everything disappears. So, with the ground lifted, it is sensitive. So, what we can see output is plus 5. Distortion a lot less. 50 Hz is sticking out, let's ground the earth, and 50 Hz disappears. Yeah, as we can see, it's a beautiful device, beautiful parameters, no such a big trail. It enhances the signal by 6 dB, and it is oddly to me, because if you have a hot keyboard or drum machines, SPDS, which is plugged in through this, you will have to press pad all the time, because if not, you will overload a preamp on console itself, and nothing will help you to get rid of clipping in some moments. Maybe there will be even uh, clicks and farts. Okay, let's go further now. Let's take J1. This is an older brother of the box which is constructed with field effect transistors. To be precise, an input has a field effect transistors and the output is the same as D1 have. Perfect, uh, we see the same picture. Let's lift the ground. Nothing happens. Connect the ground, nothing happens as well. Let's input a signal. Yep. Distortion is 0 0.006, which is OK for field effect transistors, and an output is minus 3 decibels. Almost one to one, but uh, we lower it. We stick to this legend that the signal needs to be lowered. Actually, the original die boxes worked the same way. Some of those uh, lowered the signal even to minus 18 decibels. So, as we could see, we had a bit more distortion, but we had no trail at all. Uh, we have only second and third harmonics. Let's take a look on a younger brother. It's charging. Capacitors which were discharged are charging now. Yeah, we can say that it has the best parameters of all DI boxes for sure, because we have no trail at all, and distortion is the smallest. And by this small test we already can tell that it is on a J48 level, or maybe even a bit better. But it's only numbers, it's not a sound. Simple way doesn't have a feedback, but J48, Clark and BSS has a deep uh, feedback and try to level off their parameters by that way. Let's go further. The second test I want to do, uh, let's go backwards, it's a multitone test. My sound card at the moment works as a generator, it generates eight tones, and we can watch what will be happening if we will input an eight different tones in a TA box. We have grounded the device, and now we have a bit more than eight harmonics. So we can see that we have some loop there. We have sound card input, a generator, and sound card output. And something appears in these four meters of a cable. And after ground lifts, everything became a bit smoother. 
в размере трех метров провода все-таки что-то образуется. Хорошо. Okay. Let's take next one. Beautiful DI box with field effect transistors, which bases love so much. People who use instruments which are into low frequency section. So it's charged up, everything is fine, yeah. We can see that there is a bit more noise and after a ground lift becomes a bit better. Uh, but it's a feature of field effect transistors. Okay, let's go back. Let's take uh, J48, everything calmed down, turn on our sine wave, multitone. Well, the situation is a bit worse than J1 has. Lifting the ground, we have intermodulational harmonics by 5 decibels more. But uh, it's not critical, it's a quite good product good enough quality. The only thing is it's uh, pretty heavy and you cannot take a lot of those on tour. Well, let's continue. Our green friend BSS, it will charge. Let's turn on a multitone and we'll see what's happening. Well, it's unacceptable for large stages and qualitative sound. Please take a look on a low frequency register because there are all main harmonics and there is a lot of mod. 30, 40 Hz, 60 Hz. Pretty arguable choice for a concert or a small event. You'll always have a set of outside noises which you can't hear because they appear only when sound is on, but when it's standby it's quiet. Let's go further. Very interesting feature. Yeah. Let's put it back. Plugging our blue friend, which has a balanced input, but as you can see, it's a less sensitive. Let's try to turn it on and see what will happen. Well, what was expected, first of all, a lot of noise in uh, low frequencies and, of course, intermodulational noise, which we have on all frequency range, quite identical to a BSS. By plugging anything in through those two devices, you will get 100% coloration. And if you have 5 or 10 such units on stage, uh, can you imagine what is happening in the portals? All this noise is summing up. How can we talk about sound clarity of an expensive instrument which musicians try to purchase and use on a concert to satisfy a listener? By the way, let's try to lift the ground. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't help. I want to point out that these are two hybrid DA boxes because they have an electronic circuit and transformers on an output. Most likely it's just a transformer which converts unbalance into a balance. So, a beautiful test, beautiful level of uh, gear. Let me plug in a red one again uh, for a happy end. Let it charge. Uh, well, downside of those two DA boxes is that they are charging slowly because they have a large capacity inside. Uh, let's uh, send a multidon again. Well, here everything is beautiful. We will have a beautiful bass, a beautiful keys clarity, a transparency of uh, DJ any music, uh, which you will pass through this device. A perfect piece of gear to have in your arsenal. And the final test we will do is a weight test. We have weights here. Uh, J48. 
726 grams. BSS audio. BSS. 701 gram. Clark Technic. Clark Technic. 826 grams. Simple weight D1. Simple weight D1. 342 grams. And J1. 317 grams. Well, I think we can put an end here. You are welcome to choose by yourself. Should we have those? And how to work? And which quality of sound uh, to provide to our listeners on stage and in a studio? Uh, wish you all the best. Till the next time. Goodbye.